listening to Inclusive AF with Jackie Clayton and Katie Van Horn. All righty. Welcome to the Inclusive AF podcast. I'm Katie Van Horn. And I'm Jackie Clayton at the beach. Yeah, we are. So we're at the beach today. So excited. Um, we're using our Zoom backgrounds. For those of you just listening, not watching, we have our Zoom backgrounds on with our beach scenes behind us because um, we were feeling a little like we need a vacation and because we have some things we want to talk about. So Jackie, I'm going to actually um, let uh, you know, or I shouldn't say let you, I'm going to throw it to you and have you kick it off. Well, I've been noticing something that's been going on with this whole like work from home thing. It's weird. So I didn't know this has been going on. I've been working at home for like 10 years, but there are people that have decided to turn like working at home into like TMZ, like full on want to see everything that's going on in your house Mm -hmm. or keep your video on all the time. Um, getting criticized for not turning your camera on during meetings, which I think is so rude. Like, why do I have to let everybody see me eat my roast beef sandwich? Like, I'm hungry, people. I don't want to have my camera on. So, yeah, I, I, well, I want to share your roast beef sandwich. So that is why I want your camera on. But since we're on the beach hanging out together, I think you should share. That would only be the right thing to do, Jacqueline. Um, (laughs) But yeah, so, you know, we want to just talk a little bit about exactly that, like the almost weaponizing of working from home that has been going on. And so what what I'll share and, and kind of what got this conversation started is that Jackie and I are on quite a few HR Facebook groups and, and um, subscribe to quite a few HR blogs and this and that and their thing. And there is this kind of theme that we're seeing from folks around attendance policies and having cameras on and making sure that people are turning on their cameras and, oh, should we give them demerits or whatever, whatever it is. And, you know, how do we deal with that? They didn't actually say demerits. That was my word, but still, (laughs) it feels like it's a demerit. Yeah. They were thinking it. So just thinking about like how, what is the right amount? You know, we talk about being authentic we talk about being inclusive. We talk about, you know, being able to share your whole self at work and, and how we want folks to be able to do that. But there's also a, maybe I don't want to share. It's yeah. It's share what you feel comfortable with sharing. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't really like sharing my kitchen, but I do all the time. Cause I can't, I mean, unless I move, it's just the way it is. Unless I'm here at the office space, but I don't think you should require people like, when is it going to be about work? Can't it right. just be the work I do? Why right. do you have to know what the process is? We talk about like, you know, like, why do you have to see how the sausage is made? Well, because I'm in your kitchen, Jackie. That's why I need well, to see how the okay, sausage is made. <laughs> okay, in my particular office situation, you, you're going to have to watch how the sausage is made. Um, but, yes. What do you think has been the most outrageous thing that you heard or seen as far as policy besides the fact that of HR people asking if they should have a policy even though people have been home for freaking seven months and now- right yeah all of a sudden it needs to be a policy I think so just this past week I have seen uh we want to insist on people turning their cameras on during their shift and I'm using air quotes for shift because it's like the core hours or whatever it is because these aren't folks that are you know like in a call center or anything along those lines. These are, you know, I mean, not that everyone should, I I don't think anyone should have to have their camera on all day long, but it's, you know, like engineers and folks that probably are stepping away to go do other stuff, but they're getting their job done. So, I mean, I think for all of us managing the working from home, I mean, you and I both have worked from home for quite some time. So I am totally that person that's like, okay, well, I'm going to go change over a load of clothes in the wash. I'm going to grab some water and then I'm going to sit here and work for four hours. And then I'm going to get up and make something to eat or whatever, maybe not four hours, but you get my point. Like, yeah, there's that balance that you, that we now have to strike. And it's also, you know, we don't even need to get into like parenting and homeschooling and all that business we can, but 
I, I think it's just let people do their jobs. So like the policies that I'm seeing are just like, are you managing children? Because that as an HR person doesn't sound fun. I, I don't as anyone. Think, no, I, I just, I don't think people realize what this does to a person's psyche. Like it creates a really wor- weird, unsafe, competitive environment where people are trying to prove how much they're working all the time right and they will get completely burnt out there's no i mean or you know it's too bad we can't like set up a candid camera and we could just be lounging all day what what are you going to do now (laughs) i set the camera over my bed (laughs) yep i'll be right there It's actually funny that you say that. So my sisters, I have a couple of sisters that are teachers. One of them was mentioning that, you know, that getting your kids to keep their cameras on has been very tough. But like she has said that, you know, she'll have kids that are like playing in their bed as they're, <laughs> as they're in class, which I just find because I'm not a teacher. For her, it's not as funny. Um, <laughs> no, no. Have, have you like seriously met with somebody and they were in their bed, in their bedroom during a meeting? I have. Have yeah, you? absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I've had people recently, and again, this is kind of the being inclusive and going, Hey, this is what space you have. This is where you are right now. Sure. Like being been in their bedroom, bed's not made. And you know, just is what it is. It's a lot of different things because I think it's also the, it's, I, it's the socioeconomic piece. That's just like, let's be inclusive of everybody, but it's also just the, how people live that might be different than I live. And, and so it is like, it's the, I don't live in New York, so I have more space than other folks, I or San Francisco or wherever. And so I think there's also that piece where I was on the phone with a gentleman from New York and his three-year-old ran into the bedroom that he was in trying to, <laughs> it was it was her bedroom, so he was in her bedroom, but that was the only space that they had in the apartment for him to have a conversation. And so, you know, and it was funny and, you know, we kind of all laughed about it, but it was one of those things that like, he's like, I'm so sorry, this is the only space I have that isn't already occupied or is not a kind of open environment where everyone is there? And so it is just, everyone has has different ways of living and that's okay. I totally last week forgot to press mute when my daughter came home with (laughs) boneless chicken wings and was explaining to me that she got me a Kool-Aid juice box because she bought me a kid's meal. And on the flip side, my Jeremy, which people know I work with Jeremy, started yelling you're not on mute. And I'm like, why is he yelling? It was a whole thing. Like, (laughs) who was he yelling at? (laughs) Me. He was like, no, I know. (laughs) I'm like, why is he yelling? Like, why is he so loud? And what is a jammer? (laughs) Kool-Aid jammer? It was like a whole, and I was so embarrassed. And I, cause you know me, I I have rolled my eyes, heavy side, opened a beer at three o'clock once. Yeah. And then, and of course, it was Jeremy, again, who started cracking up and said, look, Jackie can't take it. She totally just got a beer in the middle of the day. It's time. And no, and like, I think that's, like, <laughs> and now that I'm not going to encourage that people drink during the day, that might step over the line slightly, but at the time it was necessary and I understand. It, they earned but, it. Right, but it's it's this whole um judgment of or or whatever it might be and I guess it goes back to for me the HR you're not anybody's parent that's right you are not here to hand out demerits you're not a school marm no like what are you trying to achieve by being the police for the entire organization what is that fun for someone it can't be but I don't think they realize how the workflow moves in an office. Like I right. haven't been in an office in a long time, but people, even though they look like they're sitting at their desk typing, they're not. You have to have breaks in between your work. Even if it's like, maybe you check the, the, your Facebook or you check something, you know, whatever it is to just take a minute to step away from work in order to be productive. Mm-hmm. But I am, I cannot, I'm like the, the frog in like the Looney Tunes cartoons. 
Like, if you start making demands, I will freeze. I totally was thrown off. When you forced me to do something, and I was having such a bad day, and someone said, oh, can we talk? And I go, yeah. And they said, what's diversity? And I couldn't answer the question, Katie. Like, I just can't do requests like that. Mm -mm. And so for you put that pressure on people, and I know what diversity is. So if people were asking you to do creative work or come up with solutions and you feel like you're unsafe, you're just not going to do your best work. Well, and I think it's also, and I don't know how you are about this, but I am one of those people that I know my limits, meaning from like a, when am I most creative? When am I most productive? When am I like, nope, I got to shut down throughout my day. Mm -hmm. And so I also, like, I used to have a colleague and she was a total night owl, meaning like she would be like, let's start working on this project at 5 p.m. And by like 5.30, I was like, and we're done. And, <laughs> yeah. and she'd be like, well, no, no, we have six more hours to work on this. And it was kind of a little bit of a debate between the two of us because as she was definitely someone who did her best work at night. And I was like, start me off at 7 a.m. doing this same project and I will knock it out of the park. And it's just because of like, our bodies, whatever, you know, how we mentally trained ourselves. Now working in tech, that changed, that shifted quite a bit because I was that person that would like get in the office at 7 a.m. Yes. But then, you know, when no one else showed up until 9.30, it kind of <laughs> threw things off a bit. But like even that, you know, like it's knowing your, like what time of day is best to answer a question like, hey, I don't know how to Google things. Can you tell me what diversity means? Right. That's <laughs> right. That's <laughs> so there's that um but I also think there's a piece here that like I think we're we already talked about this a little bit I think in one of the other episodes around the fact that we are seeing a exodus of people from the workforce and the exodus is much more uh, the numbers are much higher for women and BIPOC Mm -hmm. And, and that being the case, it is the, these things are all adding up to why people are leaving, you know, and maybe not the, okay, Hey, you have to have your camera on all day long. Cause that is just so absurd, wackadoo bananas, like, no, but it's also the, you know, when I have my kids there and I'm trying to be on a conference call, I don't have kids, but like in this example, and I'm trying to have a conference call and they're interrupting or they're doing whatever, how that might throw off the conversation. And so they're choosing, oh, you know, instead of, of staying in the workforce, I'm going to go take care of my kids because I can't send them to daycare. I can't do this. I can't do that. And, and it's just so unfortunate because I think the backlash from a diversity perspective, we're going to see the numbers dip again that we have been working on for years to increase women in leadership roles, uh, you know, You're BIPOC people right in leadership on. roles. You're fully right about that. Sorry, go ahead. Keep no, 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 that's it. No, I just, I, I just feel like there's so many other things that HR professionals can be doing right now. Mm -hmm. Because you do have a different type of audience. You do have a, a space where you can see people that you never were able to see even in the right. office because you were stuck with your little, you know, pals in the office. Like you should be surveying people. You should be finding out what the temperament is. You should be finding out what they need. Like do what's going on with like holiday gifts or things that people did within the office what what do they need what would make them be better and feel more like their best selves and mm -hmm. for some people they just figured out the like the how to maneuver within the office when all of this happened and others which is more interesting to me is the people who started at companies while it was remote how are they going to transition when they have to go back in the office well, and even, yes, and even how are they adjusting to the culture that isn't the actual culture right now because of the fact that everyone's working remotely? Right. Right. How does that, like, how are they, like, onboarding or how are they learning the unwritten rules? How are they learning some of the things that you know because you're sitting next to someone in an office all day that you wouldn't know if you're sitting at home? You know, how, how even, like, things that seem really simple, like how a meeting is run, meaning, you know, who gets to talk, who, when do they talk? How does this format go? Which you can, you know, read the room and read cues when you're sitting with someone or with a group of people, 
which you can't get on Zoom, especially, you know, if you're on a Zoom that maybe isn't using video, which right. again, it should be okay, but it is, how do you balance that? And so I agree with you wholeheartedly, like what is HR doing to actually think about what would be the most impactful for folks? Like if you're not doing a holiday party this year, what actually would be helpful for folks? Right. And it might be, wow, I'm going to get you a hundred dollar gift card for groceries. Right. Or it might be, you know, hey, we're going to get sending one, everyone a um, Postmates gift card or whatever, or Uber Eats or whatever they use. Um, because I think there's other pieces too that it's even, I think you and I have talked about this a little bit. By the time I'm done at the end of the day, because I feel like it's a different level of engagement being on Zoom all day long, Right. by the time the day is over, and it's like, okay, what's for dinner? The last decision I could possibly try and make is going and looking in my refrigerator, my pantry and going, oh, this is what I'm going to make tonight. Cause I'm like, ah, uh, I'm going to order something or I'm going to sit here quietly and <laughs> eat gummy bears. It has been so bad for me. And I am glad you said that. Cause I thought like literally have to talk to the therapist about why I went from somebody who loves to cook to literally crying over you know, I, I have to make dinner every night. Mm -hmm. and, and part of it is just because like, like you're saying, everybody's had to adjust and my whole family has had to adjust too. And, you know, okay, you're on zoom all day. So, and I have to have my camera and I can't walk around or do anything. So I'm not doing anything. I'm not preparing the things that I used to. I'm not taking the time. I don't want people, because I have, you know, all of these other organizations and things that I volunteer and stuff. And then I want them to sit when I'm ready, but I have no schedule when it, mm -hmm. for me time, you right. know, because of, I, similar to what you were talking about earlier about like being a day person or a night person, my company currently, the majority of the employees live in Seattle and I live in Texas. So I, I'm still getting notes at 530, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 730, 8 o'clock. Um, not all of them need my attention. Some of these, again, I should probably talk to the therapist about just shredding down. <laughs> oh no. I Boundaries. I I Boundaries. I need it. Do I owe you a copay for this? But, um, is trying to get all of these things adjusted for when is your best time? And I'm glad you brought that up. I think that's a great recommendation for all of our listeners to, to set up not only your boundaries, but make a note of when you feel your best and you can actually do your best. I am a daylight person, mm -hmm. which means if the sun comes up at five, I'm up. If the mm -hmm. sun doesn't come out till eight, I'm just not <laughs> talking. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it, it, no, it, it, it's so true. And obviously we are, you know, recording this in November, mid-November and, oh no, late November. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my God. Okay. Sorry. I just looked at my calendar. Big mistake. Anyways, um, that being the case though, like here in Arizona, and I think you're probably in the same boat where the sun is rising around seven, in seven ish. So in the, so when I get, which is my normal time to get up, it's dark out. And right. so my first cup of coffee that I'm drinking is in the dark. I mean, I turn on lights, but it's dark outside. And so there is that difference of, you know, in the, in the, um, summertime, you know, the sun is up at <laughs> much earlier than I get up, but I do, yeah. you know, usually get up as soon as this, I can see the light coming into the house. Um, but yeah, no, I am totally a proponent of figuring out what your best time is to do different things. And it is just a matter of like mapping out like, okay, here's when I'm most creative. Here's when I'm most, Hey, I can be heads down working on something. Here's when I'm really good to be in meetings. But again, we don't have that luxury right now of saying, you know what? I can't be on a zoom call from eight until five because some of those hours I need to be doing this, that, or the other thing. Right. And we had those breaks of going and talking to someone in person or being on a phone call versus a video call. That's the right. one that actually is like, when someone's like, Hey, let's just jump on a phone call. I'm like, Oh yes, please. I'm so on board because it is a, I would much rather do that, not because I like talking on the phone more than Zoom, but just because I'm like, it's a break in what the norm is. Well, because you can walk around your house. True. You're a, you're a talk walker. I'm a talk mm -hmm. walker. Um, 
some people, I used to always pace. I'm a pacer. Like in meetings when I'm thinking, I walk around the house. I walk, And I think, I think that's a generational thing for us too. Like mm-hmm. we both had those like t- phones with the long cord and you would pull it and it was like such a luxury, <laughs> you know, where you would hide in all the cords, you know, so you could get <laughs> privacy. Um, and I, I appreciate that. And we are, I mean, until I shaved my head, I would be like, I'm not Zoom ready. Like the effort mm-hmm. it took to try to even look, you know, like I didn't have a big nest on my head. That took effort. Uh, right and, and you, you I mean you know I've postponed a few mornings and I'm like I haven't showered yet and yeah. I need to wash my hair and then when I wash my hair that's not just a, I wash my hair and I'm ready to roll it takes a minute and so and so yeah fully I agree with that and I I think it's also you just made me think of something that is also kind of that remote um leadership whatever you want to call it you know I think you've probably heard the advice of like when you have to have a hard conversation with an employee or when you're trying to give feedback to do like a walking one-on-one meaning. So the person doesn't have to look you in the eye mm-hmm. when you're saying something like that might be kind of tough for them to receive mm-hmm. that, Hey, go take a walk around the building or go, you know, just go on a walking conversation. So you're not staring in their eyes as you're telling them, wow, your performance isn't great right now. And mm-hmm. I need to talk to you about it just because it's, it, there is something there from a, if I have to look someone in the eye while they're telling me I'm not great, that hurts versus, mm-hmm. hey, we're going on a walk and I can look other places, I can do whatever I need to do. And so even that, like we're not having that luxury. And yes, I am totally a, when you're giving feedback, be in person as much as you can. And obviously Zoom is the next best alternative or video of whatever option you have, Microsoft Teams, whatever it might be. But that being the case, there is that kind of, wow, you know, when you're delivering tough feedback, this is how I normally would tell a leader to do it is go take them on a walk, go have a conversation that you're not having to like stare at them in the eye. Do you hear me, Johnny? Do you hear the feedback I'm giving you? (laughs) Um, So yeah, I I think there's a piece there too that the walking or doing it on the phone, you know, when you can is something to consider. I'm wondering how disproportionate this is to uh, people who are um, hourly employees versus salaried employees. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like you're worried about the the people that are making, you know, working by the hour, like they're going to be taking advantage, and which is always the situation, which is so laughable. Like mm-hmm. you making six figures or spending your time trying to monitor people that are making, you know, less, you know, they, your salary, less than half of your salary. And you're going to point and pick at them because they're not freaking on the chain game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, what the hell. Sorry, children. Don't cuss. <laughs> it's very bad. Um. <laughs> um yeah no I agree I think it's a it, it is there is a balance there because it is a how do you hold people accountable and at the same time respect boundaries and so again yes we are joking a little bit or you know kind of having some fun with this hey we're on a beach but it is a we have to be thoughtful about the fact that maybe their background isn't ready or they don't want to share. And and it might not be that there's something like, oh, hey, a bed's not made or whatever, but it could just be that they're just a private person. They don't want to share their entire lives with their coworkers. I know people that are like, yeah, it's just not my thing to be that open with folks to let them know who's walking around behind me while I'm on a conference call or or what's going on in my home. And and that's okay. And it's the, the accountability piece is really are they doing the work that you're asking them to do? Are they getting the work the done? Mm-hmm. Depend on the outcome of the work instead of doing those things. I remember when I, I was at a job and um, somebody had complained. It was when I was at agency recruiting and they had complained that I was taking too many breaks and said, oh, well, Jackie's taking too many breaks. And my boss said, well, Jackie's top recruiter. She could take a bath 
right here in the middle of office if she wants. <laughs> and that's the thing that is. And so uh, she did. <laughs> and I did. It's on my all hands. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I totally Sorry. interrupted you. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it was one of those things where people do judge and they look at it because you're not sitting right there on camera as if it's some benefit. Nobody wants to sit there in the first place. That's the whole point. That's that's what we're dealing with. And I think it's so important to meet people where they are and give them an opportunity, especially because they're at home anyway. What about mm -hmm. saying, when are you best? What would be good for you? Starting at 10 and working till nine, starting at five and working until 12. Like what would be good in the in, interdepartmental um, observation of these are these people's work hours. These are the times when we can schedule meetings. Just try it. Well, it, it's, it goes along with, I think what so many of us who've done, like who've done work with global companies and, and even you just mentioned like, Hey, I'm getting stuff from the West coast until whatever time. And, you know, similarly, you know, I'm getting stuff like I wake up and I have emails from folks on the East coast or from Europe or wherever. And it's like, Oh, wow. It's been five hours. And I didn't respond to this because I just woke up. Um, and so there is that, you know, that urgency that you create for yourself, which no one else probably even realizes is there or cares. Cause they're like, Hey, you responded to me today. That's all I was really worried about. Right. But there is this, like, again, even with like folks that have kids at home, Hey, your kids are going to be online from eight to noon with their online classroom or whatever they're doing. So during that time is a good time to have your Zoom calls because they're, you know, with their teachers ish. <laughs> um, but like, you know what I mean? Like just asking that question. And I know it's hard to like do that across multiple people, but it is the like acknowledging that people are humans and they have other stuff going on. And, and to your point, what's the best time for you? I was laughing so hard. So at my house, I'm there, my, my senior in high school is at home and my junior in college are at home. Um, my junior in college has her work computer, she has her school computer, and then she has a computer that she does all her data science programming on. My son has his, uh, the 17 year old senior, he has his Chromebook and then he has his school book because one of them, he works on various documents because some people use Google Classroom and some people don't. And he prefers mm -hmm. to be able to work on the Google Classroom. And then I have my computer. They both have iPhones. We have the Xbox. We have our, everybody has a Google Mini or, or a Google Home and the speakers. And he was playing video games. Sorry, Waco ISD. In the middle of the day and it stopped. And he ran in the middle of my meeting and he was like, mom they can't hear you the computer is down and I was like oh no mine is on priority like I just turned off the xbox right but he thought because it's happened before where because I do meetings and webinars and conferences like where I could be giving a presentation and have no idea that the whole thing's down mm -hmm. and it was just so funny because I guess we're blessed but I don't know how people who don't have as, as good of Wi-Fi, or if you were in a, like a high rise mm -hmm. competing with all of that, trying to do that in your house, how many hotspots can you have? I just can't, right. I don't know. I don't know. The lesson here is stop gaming during the workday, son. Don't game, son. <laughs> don't game. It's bad. The, I did a day. webinar or I did a panel <laughs> conversation this week and TJ, I made him go around and unplug all the things that were not being used. He had to right. unplug our two smart TVs, all of the Google Home thingies that we weren't using, all of the stuff that connected. All, we just turned it off because it, that would not be great. I was, <laughs> I don't even know if I should admit this, but I think it's kind of funny. It's not funny, but it is a little bit funny. So I was uh, in the middle of a training like two, three weeks ago, yep. and I had sent them to their breakout rooms to work on a specific topic. And while they were in their breakout rooms, my Wi-Fi went down. So then, of course, I had the panic of my Wi-Fi is down. I was the uh, the leader, the host of the the um, 
the Zoom. And I didn't know, I was like, oh my gosh, did that just shut down the whole Zoom? And these 40 people that are on the Zoom are now like, what happened? You know what? So I'm like losing it, like just completely, you know, I lost my mind a little bit. I was freaking out. So I get everything back online, jump back in. And oh, did I mention that the CEO was a part of this training? <laughs> So I get back online. It's been like four ish, maybe five minutes. So I jump back online and they're still in their breakout rooms. And so I bring them back and I was like, oh, that was a little bit longer. Oh, that was okay with everybody. <laughs> and oh, just played no. it off. Like, yes, I just was, I just totally went over fantastic. a few minutes. It's totally fine. Um, but I think that's like, it's so everyone's dealing with stuff like that. That's just kind of ridiculous, but also like how else, what else are you going to do? It just is what it is. So yeah, the, the Wi-Fi sitch is always a good one. So I just my camera from the okay. Uh, Jackie's now, <laughs> I think Jackie just went for a swim. I don't know what's happening. Um, we've, uh, Jackie, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe this to the listeners right now that Jackie just kind of went down into the waves of her zoom background and went for a quick swim. Man, overboard. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Because it's, it's, if you're listening, you can't see it, but the video just got bad. I was trying to make it easier and I just made it worse. So with that being said, so man. what is your, what is your one thing for all leaders all employees with their peers to be thinking about as they um, go into their work week next week, what's the one thing that you would give as advice to managers, HR, and employees who have peers? I would say if you haven't yet, it's time to do a pulse check on where people are, what is working, what's not working, and try to figure out if... um, this is something that uh, if working, what's how working at home is going and ask them what they need in order to be successful at their jobs, I think is mm-hmm. going to be important. Just do a quick pulse check, ask them, you know, five different questions and then keep that into consideration because you can really um, change the trajectory of your whole company during this time of getting that information that you wouldn't have had otherwise and start mm-hmm. thinking about what you're going to do moving forward through Um, some people will be celebrating holidays. Some people, um, are going to be sad because of that. And so do a a mental health check as well, just to try to offer support and, and let people know about the resources that are available to them. That's what I would say. I think that's great. And I love that idea because I also think, you know, we know, I don't know, I I think you have a similar situation in Texas and kind of across the, the U S we're seeing, Schools are closing again. There's making decisions that, hey, we're going to close until January, things like that because of COVID. And so we're kind of in that same situation that we were in in the spring of kind of the unknown, not knowing what's going on for a lot of parents. But then also the, you know, the EAP, so employee assistance programs, whatever you can do to give them mental health support and encourage people to talk to someone, encourage people to reach out to EAP encourage them and make sure that your benefits cover mental health. And, you know, there's a lot of things going on right now that they are, that, that insurance companies are actually covering, which is happily surprising um, that they are covering telemedicine quite a bit, which is great, especially from a therapy perspective. And, you know, we want to encourage that and continue that as much as possible so that you can have a therapy session from home. Um, And then I think that last one is exactly what you just said is kind of just around the the holidays as, you know, however people are celebrating the holidays, knowing that folks aren't going to get to see extended family or are going to have to make decisions about celebrations to make sure that they are keeping everyone healthy and safe. Um, So, you know, grandma might not be able to come to the holidays or we might not be able to do any type of extended family might just be your, you know, your uh, nuclear family, whatever that family looks like. And so like, Thinking about that type of thing, I think is also front of mind for so many folks, um, especially going into this this week of um, Thanksgiving that a lot of folks celebrate. So just that type of stuff is just keeping that in mind of, you know, people are challenged right now in ways that they haven't been before and being, giving them grace and yeah. giving them the right tools to get, to, to be okay mentally and to be okay 
with doing things differently this year. So um, thank you, Jackie, for uh, this conversation. And thank you all for joining us and listening. <laughs> and welcome. To, this is Cartoon Jackie. Um, Cartoon Jackie would also like to say. <laughs> I was like, no, I was going to say thanks from Cartoon Jackie. Because you can't see my camera anyway. So. Thank you for joining the inclusive, inclusive AF podcast. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye